This show is part of the RetroZap.com podcast network. Today's episode is brought to you by Will You Wear a Mask, I Ask? This new ebook, written by the creator of Animaniacs, Tom Ruga, is available right now as an ebook on Amazon. In the spirit of Green Eggs and Ham, this rhyming picture book features a grocery clerk trying to convince a defiant customer to put on a mask before entering the store. It's a great book that's perfect for the entire family. You can find it right now over at Amazon.AnimaniCast.com. And welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Animaniacast. And welcome, everybody, once again to the Animaniacast. We are the only podcast out there that's dedicated to the animated television series, Animaniacs, as well as other shows in the uh, Rugerverse, such as, oh, Tiny Toon Adventures, Pinky and the Brain, and Freakazoid. But today, we're excited that we're talking about something that came out just last week, and that is the Animaniacs reboot teaser trailer thing. I am Joey, and joining me once again is my brother Nathan. I hope my Hootie and the Blowfish album finally finished downloading off Napster. (laughs) And across the country in Georgia, it's Kelly. Hello. Hello, and wow, we finally got something to talk about. I mean, (laughs) well, we can talk about other stuff as well, but this is something official. I mean, we always talk about Steven Spielberg. That's very true. true. Uh, But we finally have some official... Uh, footage to talk about. Now, we've seen some stuff that's been leaked to us, which we've talked about before in a previous episode. We might talk a little bit about that today, but um, we finally got to see uh, a sneak peek, I would say. This isn't, I I wouldn't call this a trailer necessarily. but Like a teaser trailer almost. Yeah, it's more like, hey, everybody, um, we're we're doing something here. This is something that, honestly, they probably should have released, ooh, Two years ago, (laughs) (laughs) I think they filmed it back in 2018, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think that was around the time everyone's in the same room. Because people were still surprised that there's a new Animaniacs. Yeah, people still didn't know. It's amazing. Uh, We shared this out on our Twitter and especially on Facebook. People were freaking out um, with the engagement levels on that post were through the roof. And a lot of people, and we'll share some of those responses in a little bit, there were a lot of people saying, oh, I had no idea. This is so cool and so excited about it. And yeah, uh, Warner Brothers, Hulu, I mean, they should have been excited about this a while ago. They should have been listening to us. Exactly. But hopefully some of them are right now, hopefully. And if you're <laughs> a new listener, boy, oh, you got a lot of you got a lot of catching up to do, but hopefully you enjoy it. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, yes, we have we have a uh, oh man, we might even get to some uh, listener feedback. We have some couple of new uh, Apple Podcast reviews to get to as well. What? That that dropped like in in uh, the summer and in September, I believe, and we totally forgot about mentioning them. So yeah, we forgot. To, I forgot those things were existed. I know exactly. So, but people but are we still, appreciate them <laughs> absolutely, especially as uh, we're going getting closer to the actual reboot we're doing kind of a countdown on social media where each day we uh, share one of our previous episodes talking about uh, you know episodes of animaniacs and uh it's it's been fun to see people kind of discovering the show and uh, really some people are binging the show they they say i just discovered it and i've been listening to it for three days straight now and i've gone insane uh you must have <laughs> I, I would think so totally insaney totally insaney they no sleep for three days uh but it's totally worth it it gets is, even funnier <laughs> it gets yes it, we're, we're much funnier when you're behind padded walls this is a, a podcast for you well anyway let's go ahead and get to our discussion of this uh teaser trailer thingamabobber and what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna go ahead and uh, play the trailer first and then we'll go ahead and discuss what we've seen 
Let this be a lesson to all. Wherever there is stupidity, we'll, we'll be there. This isn't new. <laughs> Are you pondering what I'm pondering? Still not new. <laughs> it's Yakko and Wacko and our sister Dot. It's time for anime. New stuff. All right, there's a yeah. lot of pressure on our first lines. Maybe now this is where the animation looks a lot season, worse. But modern to show that we're not your dad's animaniacs. <laughs> we're back. We're recording the animaniacs, which includes Pinky and the Brain. No. And. Yakko, Wacko, and Dot. Hello. We all love this show and these yeah. characters so much, and the scripts so far, they're really, really funny. It's going to be a great new endeavor. Feels good to be back. Uh, Dot, I think we missed our exit. Oopsie. <laughs> I can't wait to get back to the water tower. I hope my Hootie and the Blowfish album is finally done downloading on Napster. Yes. Are you sure this is a good idea? Don't worry. I've done this before. Really? No, wait. I made beef jerky before. What we're gonna do tomorrow night, Brain? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. <laughs> this is an absolute dream come true. We're animated, totally insane. Animaniacs, those are the facts. All right, only on Hulu. And for those people, one of the biggest questions that we've gotten from a lot of people is, um, how am I going to see it? I don't live in the United States and we don't have Hulu in our country. And I've reached out to a couple people um, who actually work on the show and they don't know either. Uh, they say, <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that I've heard is, that's something the executives know, and with COVID, now everyone's so separated that no one kind of hears the rumors of where it's going to play. So I mean, that's basically an invitation for piracy. I it mean, really yeah. is. Not that I would encourage it, and and no, don't do it. But I mean, if if it's available here and not anywhere else, they're gonna find a way to get it. Well, yeah, exactly. With Disney Plus, I mean, I remember when The Mandalorian came out, and I don't think Disney Plus was available in all countries at the time. So people in uh, Europe were uh, were putting out uh, little things saying, uh, you know, who, who can share the episode with me and everything. So that's what's going to happen unless you get like a VPN or something. Yeah, if like you get that. a VPN, you can say you're in America and, and then pay for the subscription. Mm-hmm. Well, then that sounds like the right way to do it. But, yeah, we know, not everybody's going to do it that way. Um, well, VPNs aside and everything, what do you guys think of the trailer? What Or this thing that we saw? <laughs> I can't even call it a trailer because we only saw, as one of our listeners, Curtis Findlay, I believe it was, uh, put on our Facebook page, wow, a whole second of animation. <laughs> It Which is true. Me of the old like Disney things, you know, like the making of, yes. like a commercial for the making of a Disney film because of all the behind the scenes stuff, and and you did see some footage. It was definitely something that got people hyped up for it. I'll say that. Um, when those commercials would come on the Disney Channel, particularly one for the Lion King. I was mm -hmm. all over that. Oh, speaking of speaking of behind the scenes real quick, Kelly, you got to check out that one um, new documentary on Disney Plus if you haven't already. Uh, yeah. I think Howard, I think is what it's called. I think it's Howard Menken. Is that, isn't that the composer? Oh, that oh Howard Ashman. Howard Ashman, yes. It's out now. Yeah, I didn't realize it was out yet. It's out and it has some really cool behind the scenes footage of uh, it singing. It will make me cry, won't it? It's, it will make you cry, absolutely. It was, uh, But it has behind the scenes footage of uh, Beauty and the Beast. You get to see Angela Lansbury actually singing the stuff and then hearing oh, the music. Know. It's amazing. You have to see that. So back to this happy behind the scenes footage, though. <laughs> Nathan, what did you think about it when you after you saw this last Sunday? Um, it reminded me of the animation that we saw. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, it looks familiar. So <laughs> what we saw seems like it was probably pretty much what we'll be seeing in the actual show, right? I mean, yeah, well, uh, the yeah, the style was the same. Like the characters looked mm -hmm. the same, but the fluidity of it yeah. was a lot yeah, better. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, um, I think but again, we, we only saw that one little like them coming yeah, out of the water tower. Exactly. It wasn't even finished. And usually, the opening credits, especially like look in the original Animaniacs, like the best animation was the credit mm -hmm. sequence. It's by TMS, and it's just dynamic, and everybody looks on model. There's no like weird moments in that. You can go pause the original 
uh, series credits at shot by shot, and it looks superb, every single one. In fact, we'll do that in just a little bit. I'll show you a little section because we'll do a contrast and compare oh, okay. with, the, uh, with the new stuff. Um, but Kelly, any other uh, things? I mean, you said it was kind of like the Disney stuff. Uh, what did you th- What did you think about their look and uh, stuff like that? I thought they looked great. Um, you know, the the rough sketches and stuff obviously don't look like the final product, but it was still sort of interesting to see that um, pre pre finished, unfinished uh, look. And uh, you know, I just love animation, anyways. And it was cool that it was what we saw would look hand drawn i mean it was probably on a computer yes. yeah yeah well, I'm, I'm i'm thinking the hand drawn stuff is like the uh uh what are the like for the movies where they do the just the scenes that they're gonna show yeah, yeah. like um yeah like, storyboards yeah storyboards yeah, yeah. so yeah. i'm yeah. guessing no, those no, are what that's exactly think. what i figured it was like but um yeah but it, i like that i think it's neat it's part of the process and um mm-hmm. you know you, you see what it starts out as and then you you know it doesn't magically appear on your TV. It's like a finished product. It's you know, like that it's episode of Tiny Toons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of work involved. And I, you know, I used to want to be an animator. So I'm, I really dig all that. Yeah. It's really fun to see behind the scenes uh, storyboards and stuff. I, I really like Pixar is really good at doing that, uh, showing that stuff. Um, let me go ahead and l- let's just go through the trailer just a little bit here. Uh, with the sound off. So it starts off right here with a clip from We'll Be There, and that's Morning Malaise. Uh, remember that horrible cartoon with... Uh, I, 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 horrible's too... Way too harsh. <laughs> it was not one of my favorite Animaniacs cartoons. It was the one that was like the Howard Stern parody. Uh, like, um, yeah. Do you guys remember this one? I, I think I've totally forgotten it. Oh. Probably blocked it out of my memory. No, it's not, well, it's not very good. Um, but that's the one that got the will be there. I actually had to go to our Discord group and have several of the our uh, listeners over there let me know. It was morning malaise because uh, I love our listeners. Save they, you the time. Yeah, save me the time. <laughs> I, tried, I tried Googling the line and it just gave me the line. And I'm like, no, what episode is it from? So our listeners, they're awesome. They know morning malaise. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that one. I, no wonder I don't remember it. Uh, so not the most memorable episode that they pulled that uh, quote from. Uh, the next one right here with Pinky the Brain, I thought it was interesting. They showed an old episode, but the clip of uh, the brain talking, I-, I could tell it was a little clearer. And it was not, at least that I could tell, uh, the original recording of uh, Try to Take Over the World, you know? Hmm. Um the background that they're showing right there with uh, the the studio lot, uh, by the way, looks very familiar to a lot of the promotional material that was on the original Animaniacs. Uh, I don't have it in a area that I could grab it right now, but uh, you'll see it a lot on uh, like the, um, the original logo. They'll show those the the studio lot like that. And then of course, Kelly, I'm sure you remember this right here. The where the it's Yako Mako and their sister Dot was from which. Cartoon, I would hope you know. It's one of your favorites. Hooked on a Ceiling. Hooked on a Ceiling, absolutely. So then it goes (laughs) to the whole um, back and forth with it's time for Animaniacs. We see a split second of it. We go to the storyboarding, and they go to a couple of the jokes about how it's not your your father's Animaniacs anymore or your parents' Animaniacs. Do you think that will be the opening lines the first episode of Animaniacs I do, season and you can, whatever this is. I do think uh, it has like to it. be from the first episode. they say, what should our first lines? Yeah, yeah. exactly. It would make they, sense. Um, and they're outside somewhere. One would guess they're in the studio a lot at some point. And you would also guess that apparently they're, they haven't been in the water tower. A lot of people assume that, I mean, I always assumed that this ta- the show would start off with they've been locked in the water tower again and they escaped. But Mm-hmm. Wacko has this line about I can't wait to get back to the water tower and see if my Hootie and the Blowfish album downloaded from Napster, which I was kind yeah. of amused with. I don't know if you two liked that joke at all. I was like, huh? Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> yeah, good. That's good. Sounds good. Good. You, good. you guys gave <laughs> the thumbs 90s. up. Yeah. Very nineties. That's, that's the joke is that they haven't been around long enough. That's you know, it makes hey. sense. I understand the joke. <laughs> Napster, that was that was early 2000s, though, for me. I don't know. My computer wasn't fast enough for Napster yeah. in the 90s. Anyway, 
Uh, so now it goes to the the shots of all the voices you love, and um, they really are really really promoting. Boy oh boy, here are the voices of the Animaniacs, and this is something I think that most people in general would be a big hesitation if they came back with the show and the the original actors were not involved. Um, however, they do make sure you know they didn't mention anything about any of the writers. I think. Uh, most mm-hmm. people as- might assume that the writing might be the same. Uh, and when I talk to some of those, and, and which is, again, I'm not saying that the show is going to be bad uh, based upon new writers. I think new writers are awesome. Uh, but I, there's always a moment of hesitation, I think, for fans when they find out that the original writers were not asked back. They go, huh, mm-hmm. I don't know about that. Because, again, that's the, that is – really the most important thing uh, in a lot of ways is the words that these actors are going to say um at any rate (laughs) at any rate i don't want to be a negative nancy or whatever or negative ned don't want to be sexist (laughs) uh i'll go ahead and just keep going here so we go all the voices you love they show them recording and they talk about how we're yakko wacko and dot and pinky in the brain and they really focus on that you know how they don't mention any of the other characters, uh, new or old, uh, that are going to be in the series. Uh, and the, even the background, they have uh, <laughs> the only kind of stuff they had in the background was that initial press release photo that they have in the screens, the background screens, which um, don't look anything like the new designs at all, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's very much the old design Animaniacs, which is what they were. I don't know. If, I guess they might have just been going for that design to begin with. Um, but uh, at any rate. We finally get a shot of the mystery man himself, showrunner, executive producer, Wellesley Wilde, doing his thing. I believe it's Wellesley. <laughs> Wellesley? Well, I... You but should... I like to say Wellesley. 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 It's, it's spelled Wellesley in my mind. I've never met anyone named Wellesley or I'm, Wellesley. So. I'm just going to call him Mr. Wilde. And uh, so anyway, he's he's doing this thing. There's a guy next to him whose face is completely blurred out. I'm very curious about who this mm-hmm. other guy is. Who is that guy? He looks like a Dick Tracy character. I thought that I was just like a motion blur, but now that now that you've got it paused, yeah. it really looks like a purpose. Yeah, he's he's he's. It's not who I would expect it to be. No, <laughs> I can tell. Even blurred out, I'd, I'd know Steven Spielberg. So. <laughs> And of course, they get some a few shots of some uh, nice uh, merchandise from the '90s here. Pinky the Brain bendables. Uh, they show a script, and I tried zooming up on this, and I all I could. If you did that. I tried. It was very. It was too blurry. Uh, maybe some of you folks ah. out there can can read it. All I can tell is, that, I mean, honestly, they blurred everything out. They blurred out a guy's face, and they blurred out they the blurred out the water bottle yeah. logo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you can't pay that water. Co- and by the way, Rob Paulson needs more water. Uh, that water bottle is empty. Give that man some more water. Come on. <laughs> Mr. Wild, Mr. Wild, bottle of water, please. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> but the script, I think it says pinky on it and brain. So I think it's a pinky in the brain script. Huh. Um, uh, that's all I could really tell. Um, yeah. But it's very blurry. <laughs> well, wouldn't you know it, as soon as we were done <laughs> recording our episode, uh, turns out if you watch the HD version of this uh, trailer, it uh, you can totally read one of the pages, the one that uh, Rob Paulson is circling, actually. You can pretty much make out all the words uh, on that script. Um, I don't know why they didn't blur them out, but uh, what we're going to do right now is basically a spoiler alert. If you do not want to hear uh, at least 99% of the words on that last page, then just fast forward about two minutes. This is the end of uh, Pinky and the Brain episode, uh, which appears to be the first episode. So last warning, I'm going to go and start reading what it says right now. Animaniacs episode one, record draft 730, 2018. Pinky and the Brain, along with all the other animals, start running for their lives across the landfill. One by one, the animals are grabbed by seagulls. Brain grabs a stromboli rat, or a stromboli bat, not quite sure what that says, but stromboli bat 
<laughs> branded calendar and uses it as a sled to slide down a mountain of trash. Next to them, Skateboard Bug, I believe. Skateboard Bug is also skateboarding down the trash, but gets plucked off by a seagull. Pinky and the Brains improvised sled slams into a backhoe and they go flying into the air where they get snatched up by a seagull. Pinky and the Brain are now in midair uh, in the seagull's beak. Brain continued. I fear this is the end, Pinky. Pinky. If it is, I have a confession. Most of the time, I have no idea what you're talking about. Brain. I know. Suddenly, the seagull crashes into a window of a fancy restaurant. As the seagull slides down the window, Pinky and the Brain are released. Interior Acme Labs later that night. Reveal Pinky is watching and re-watching the video of the seagull flying into the restaurant on America's Most Tormented Pets YouTube channel on a computer. This clip is titled, Best Seagull Fails, Pinky Laughs. Look, Brain, you're popular again. This video has over 10 billion views. Brain, turn that off, Pinky. It's time to re- time to prepare for tomorrow night. Pinky, what are we going to do tomorrow night? Make a chore wheel for the cage? Brain, the same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. And there you go. Now back to our previously recorded episode. Uh, more stuff talking about how excited they are. Tress McNeil, man, oh man, did she sound exactly like Dot. And I, she's just amazing. Um, that I, I can't imagine being able to, to have a voice that, that can go that high <laughs> for uh, 20-something years after um, the show ends for her to keep doing it like that. Uh, We have some uh, great shots here of uh, Yakko, and we'll get kind of into a little in-depth thing in Wacko, uh, showing the little flipping of the the animation pages. And they do the same thing for Dot and then uh, Pinky and the Brain. Uh, By the way, that looks like it. uh, Maurice LaMarche talked about how on the first day of recording, he came to work in a a brain, I'm sorry, in a Pinky shirt. And he said... uh, Rob came to work in a brain shirt. And at first I'm thinking, well, I don't see Maurice Lamar, or I don't see Rob Paulson, I should say, wearing that brain shirt. But I look a little bit closer and maybe, just maybe, Rob Paulson's wearing it as an undershirt. Do you see that little uh, blue shirt underneath there? Uh Uh-huh. So this, uh, just through the clues of what we heard from Dragon Con and this video, it looks like this might have been the very first day of recording which, of course, you want to get, you know, footage of that whenever possible. Uh, Rob Paulson, in particular, looks just like he's having a ball. <laughs> um, so, overall, uh, looks like you know, looks like they're having a good time. And then we close with what should be uh, the part of the opening sequence one would assume it shows the warners and storyboard form with the words and an animani and baloney and zany and other stuff just all around him looks like neon signs like if las vegas was taken over by the animaniacs that's what it would look like i suppose um i don't know if i think that again i tried analyzing just the sound of the vocals on this and I get the impression that some parts of the theme song for this commercial might have been the original recording, and then some parts might have been a newer one. But I couldn't tell for absolutely sure. One thing I hope, though, is uh, even though folks like Tom Ruger are not involved in this uh, series, I hope that the since the song is essentially the same in both, I hope that... Uh, Tom Ruger is still getting paid like some residuals or something like that. Yeah. For I, hope, I mean, I hope he gets residuals and a creator credit <laughs> in, right? the, in the credits there. You know, something. Give give the man something there. So here, uh, let's go ahead and talk about some of the things uh, that were shown really quickly, and I slowed it down so we could really look at it uh, closely. So these are the shots 
of the animation pages of Yakko. And we can see first one right here, he's jumping. And he's, mm-hmm. show, he's showing off those sharp canine teeth. That's a new thing. That's a new thing. And I'll get more into that in a moment. The more I saw it, more was bothering me. So, uh, come on, play a darn thing. So the next shot right here is him kind of, I don't know, posing like he's, he looks devilish or something. He's something, he's up to something, but he's jumping again. They're jumping all around the place. Yakko again, looking down, ex- waving at something, looking down. I think. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, again, showing off those, the canine teeth, the, the differentiation of those teeth, uh, throwing up high and then going to Yakko. Okay. Uh, moving on to the Wacko, we have Wacko is waving. Hey, happy with sharp teeth. He's got that thing. Yep, he's got those sharp teeth. He's uh, sticking out his, you know, his tongue's hanging out, and he's strolling, strutting his stuff down the street with his, you know, with his flat feet, which I think mm-hmm. is also a new thing. With kind of flattish feet. Yeah, he's eating a sandwich. That's on model. That's that's something Wacko will do. Yeah, I've seen him. And, and he doesn't have pants, which is also on model. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't. They see Animaniacs is still edgy people. They're not. He's not wearing pants. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he's looking to the side, and then finally, kind of looking cute and sitting down. I will say that Wacko in a lot of these shots looks a little cuter than uh, than usual, at least in mm. my opinion. Well, he's the youngest, right? I or no, Dot's the youngest. Dot's, Dot's the youngest. Yes, Dot is. It just the, always. She just seems so much more mature than Wacko. Always. <laughs> I keep forgetting, and I, every last time I said that so and so was the youngest, and then I was wrong. So I'm not. I'm not even going to say anything. Nathan. It's but Dot is the youngest, but she's so much smarter and. <laughs> <laughs> like well, anyway, I, I forget. I for, I honestly forget. And uh, listeners, go ahead and tweet at Django FT. And correct me. Uh, to yeah. Correct him if he's wrong. Okay. I'm not going to say it one way or another. <laughs> Uh, uh, so Dot, uh, first shot we have right there is her kind of doing a, a ballet kind of stretch, uh, stepping on one toe thing. I forget what that's called when you do that in ballet, but she was doing it. Okay. And, um, <laughs> plie, I don't know, maybe. No, it's not a plie. Um, it's a, it's a ballet, uh, toe. Yeah, it's not, I want to say pirouette, but I, sure. it's good, point. That, good, good enough for me. I don't know. Uh, next shot is she. She shows her not so cute. She's kicking, kicking. It looks like it might have been a horse. Because there's yeah, two I see horse shoes. Horse shoes. Horse so. shoes. She kicked a horse, and then she looks super cute sitting on the floor. And again, she's all looking all shy. Let us out of the cagey wagey kind of move. Mm-hmm. And then the shot that they used for the initial Hulu. Um, release which shows her balancing on one foot with her hands like to her she's side. got a long sleeve shirt on it kind of does but i think that's just because she's it's not colored yeah, yeah i think the her gloves. gloves by the way the, speaking of their gloves and everything some people have noticed that their faces are a little bit yellow actually mm-hmm. compared to their gloves uh whereas before the they were both white hands and white gloves and some people have thought maybe that's due to some of the initial concept drawings of the the Animaniacs, the Warners in particular, uh, were kind of a yellowish tint uh, or almost even greenish tint. Uh, so some people think that maybe they were kind of going back to that initial concept of their faces being a little bit more yellow. Uh, it's not incredibly notice, you know, just you can't really notice that much, but it's, it's a little bit of a difference. Okay, finally, Pinky the Brain. Now, this one right here is... At first, you think like, "Oh, they look pretty much exactly the same," and in a lot of ways, they do. However, they're using a lot of the same stylistic things. Like, again, the pointed nose is is definitely more noticeable in the in brain. Mm-hmm. And another thing that's noticeable uh, is that the even the brain has sharp teeth. Um, you can kind of see it in a couple of these. It's hard to tell with. Yeah, with I can this see one. a little bit there. Yeah, he's got- yeah, it's kind of hard to tell because the the fact that they're flipping the pages, and as soon as they flip one, and the brain's always on the right side where the paper is flipping, um, so you can only see like half of brain in a lot of these. But he does have sharp teeth as well. Yeah, there we go. Um, another one of the, of Pinky kind of looking uh, like he's, he's in love. In love. It's not far from Nugent. <laughs> Maybe he kind of looks like he's staring off 
he doesn't look like he's staring at the brain, but more he's like thinking of something, a lovely idea, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Maybe he did see Farfik Newton. And you can see the brain again is kind of showing his talking about his plan, I'm sure, to take over the world. But again, having those those canines, which look at that. I mean, I'm yeah. pausing it right there in a weird spot. It just looks weird. I don't know. Sharp teeth on sharp teeth on puppy children. You got me. Fine, sure. Whatever. Uh, even though some of those shots when you pause it and you look really closely, it almost makes it look like vampires. But with mice, I don't know about that. Uh, but even on this last shot. Oh, what were you saying, Kelly? That it's an odd stylistic choice. I Abs- mean, absolutely. It makes it even more difficult to animate. It's just another extra little, you know, for every frame, extra lines when, you know, just a straight row of teeth would be much. I mean, it's why they usually do that kind of stuff in animation. I mean, it looks good, but it's also easy to draw. Yeah, yeah. It's It was definitely an, an interesting choice. And even right here in the last shot when they show the, the title, you know, Pinky and the Brain with both of them. And Pinky has his arms up in the air and his mouth wide open. And you can see he, Pinky has sharp teeth. Oh, yeah. I mean, not his front, obviously. Not, but, not his front. Oh, yeah. my gosh. That would be horrific. <laughs> he would really look like a vampire. <laughs> more, looks like they have more detail than normal. I mean, they've got that. Yeah. And it's... it's, it's like a lot more shading... It's hard to say how you know how much of this will will translate to the final product, but um, but I, I, for the most part, I'm liking what I see with with most of their designs. I don't know. I have a, a few reservations. Obviously, those teeth. I don't know if I'll ever get over that, um, but it is what it is. Let's go ahead and look at a side by side that I did with the new tower opening versus the old tower opening. And I wanted you to see how I'll pause it every now and then, and you guys can see how they just really looked at the original and just copied it shot by shot, <laughs> which I had mixed feelings about. But um, so here's the Warners. Wow. You, you see that? I mean, that's the exact same placement. Um, yeah. They're jumping out. Notice they even have the blur lines and you know in the same uh, location. You don't see the jagged teeth and Yeah, on these and on this, the on this when they're looking straight, well you can a little bit in the canines of, of uh Yakko a little bit, I think. Um but uh, this particular shot right here, I mean the original is a Hallmark ornament right now. <laughs> that right there. Mm. I think they look super, super cute like that. Um I don't know if I would want to pick up a Hallmark ornament that had the pointier faced mourners on the left hand side, you know? They need to get a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> they need to yeah, they need to Yakko needs to cut that hair. Um, <laughs> They're hippie. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing I noticed was the tower itself, and I didn't notice this because obviously it was gone in a second, was the tower door really looks three-dimensional, like, Mm computer-generated, doesn't it? I mean, it it doesn't look like it was actually drawn. It looks like a a computer model right there. Um, Just something I noticed. Let's go ahead and move on here. Uh, Just, again, uh, just pausing it every now and then just to show. I mean, Dot is (laughs) the new version of Dot. It looks on the uh, verge of super cute and kind of creepy at the same time with (laughs) with those eyes. Uh cute weirdness there's there's some uh definite uh you know you could see the canines and the definition of the teeth um again just back and forth now this was the shot right here that i thought was most noticeable and i saw right from the beginning was the swaying back and forth so they put their hands out they go to the left and it's the same darn thing. Look at that. And then it's over. Uh, so at any rate, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't wait to see the rest of this uh, intro, whatever it may look like, to see how much of it, uh, you know, borrows, ex- you know, exactly from the trailer or from the original credits, I should say. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're going to have to change quite a bit if there's no slappy the squirrel slapping 
good feathers with her purse like <laughs> yeah they're definitely going to be having some new lyrics um which uh should be interesting uh and who knows even some new characters might be introduced as well uh speaking of new characters <laughs> the imdb of animaniacs has finally been updated to, with the new show and it uh it included some characters that we had some uh, question about whether or not these were real. Um, the uh, the Animaniacs IMDb for the last couple years has been a mess. Uh, they've had essentially people with IMDb Pro accounts go on there and just put whoever they think they would like to see on the show, and which includes things like Terry Crews playing Ralph the Guard. I was so excited to hear that. So. <laughs> and it's just really off. And they even had things like, you know, the good feathers in there, which at the time I was like, good feathers aren't in the series. Um, but uh, what happened, I think this might have even just updated yesterday. And now it's even updating. Now things are gone. Ooh. Well, anyway, Kat Dealey uh, is put up there. I think she's a reality TV star. Alexis Sky is put on there. Uh, as one episode of the series. And I even saw Tyra Banks, which was the only really name I knew off the top of my head, as being listed as a character as well. Although I do not see Tyra Banks on the IMDb now. So are people still messing around with the with the series or with the character? Maybe. Yeah, here, I took a screenshot of it. It says Tyra Banks is Morgan in one episode. Um I, I reached out to one of our sources and said, hey, do you know if any of this is true? And they said that they weren't sure about that. They knew that there were celebrities doing voices on the show, though. Even Spielberg? One can hope, maybe. I don't know. Frank no. Welker is a really good uh, Steven. I don't know if you want to. Yeah, I think he prefers Frank to do him. <laughs> yes. I think he likes whoa, whoa, him. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Does that little... He does that Stephen impression. I, 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 I kind of as much as I like Stephen doing his own voice, like in Tiny Toons, uh, the Frank Welker one is, uh, it's has a, a, its own appeal. I think so. At any rate, there you go, folks. That was our shot by shot, second by second uh, breakdown of it. Um, did you notice anything else that you thought was interesting? Uh, things of note, uh, Nathan Kelly. They're both shaking their heads. No, absolutely nothing notable. <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, <laughs> didn't see Steven Spielberg. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the important. You were hoping that just a split second, Steven Spielberg has his head popped in there. That's all I need. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and look at some of the comments here that were left on our Facebook page, and, and Kelly, maybe you can pull that up as well. There are hundreds of comments on our Facebook. So there's no way we're going to read them all, but I think we'll read I'll just read a couple them. of <laughs> Nathan. Yes. Uh, you're not going to do it on the air, but Yay. you can do it all by yourself. Dude. <laughs> Have you Feel seen free. this? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of comments that are like, look at this. Whoa. You know? Yeah. We're going to skip those. Um, but let's go ahead and get to just a few of the ones here that, that kind of stood out. Um, uh, Nathan, do you have any ones that, that kind of stood out for you? Um, yeah, so this one was from uh, Mr. Kepler. Was his name? <laughs> I don't no, know. Curtis Curtis Finley. <laughs> so you, or otherwise known as Mr. Kepler. <laughs> yeah, he. We're good friends. This is his nickname. <laughs> By the way, Curtis, he's the guy who won our Good Feathers signed Q fig. Uh, That's pretty back cool. in the day. Back and folks, if you haven't listened to that Good Feathers reunion, oh my gosh, listen to that. Anyway, please tell us what did Curtis have to say. Uh, I said, are they so scared to sh- of showing more? It is weird that we haven't seen a full trailer. Yes, and like, hopefully we'll see some in New York Comic Con at the beginning of October, which is what we've been told and hopefully still is true. Yeah, hopefully they don't just show this again. <laughs> <laughs> which might I, be the case. I would not be shocked at that, too. So <laughs> we'll see. They'll show something and it might be this. but Man, oh man. Okay. Uh, would not shock me. Um, let's say I found a comment here that is uh, – most of the comments are positive. Most of the comments are very much like, hey, look at this, uh, and like, inc- or kind of like apprehensive like Curtis. Like why are they 
<laughs> you know, yeah, like, I hope more. this is good. <laughs> <laughs> but most of them are very positive. Most of them are like, oh my gosh, it's back. It makes me yeah, so happy. Yeah, I didn't know this was happening. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, one comment, however, came from M.D. Sweeney. And Sweeney is, uh, if you don't know who he is, folks, he, he was a writer on the original series. Uh, he is responsible for a lot of the morals that are found in the Wheel of Morality. And he's also married to the voice of Slappy Squirrel. Uh, that would be Sherry Stoner. So his reaction was, makes me want to puke. <laughs> uh, obviously, uh, it's a little upset that, uh, you, know, I, you know, which I would be too if I worked on the original series and I was not asked back. Uh, my friends were not asked back. I would probably be upset and uh, it would, I would probably make me sick as well seeing stuff like that without me being involved. Um and I, you know, try to be nice and say it's, you know, because it's true. <laughs> I tell them that it's a shame that him and the rest of the writers were not asked back. Um, and which made uh, one of our uh, Facebook followers say that, oh, that makes me a little scared about the show. However, one of the folks who has worked on the original series uh, and he's also working on the new series is uh, Tony Craig. And... He commented as well, saying, it's a shame that everyone keeps griping about a show that they are were all clamoring for and they haven't even seen yet to cast a fair judgment. Um, and basically saying the original series was awesome, but I don't think anything, uh, there, there's nothing in the new series which I am working on that is puke-inducing. Mr. Sweeney, if I put myself in your shoes, I would if you really enjoyed working on the original series, be very disappointed not to have been contacted in any way about the new series. I think it's a miracle that I am able to get on it. I hope you'll be given a chance when it comes on. Uh, and Tony then goes further, just a little bit further to say, if I could share anything, I would, because I've been, after working in the industry for over 30 years, not much makes me laugh out loud anymore. But the story reels for this show, with no sound effects or music even, did. And it's going to be a fantastic show. The designers are top-notch, and the lead, Genevieve Tsai, refuses to let any of us get away with doing nothing less than our very best work. The storyboards have been given lots of attention, and I'm, ex I'm as excited as anyone else to see when it premieres. So... Nice to know <laughs> that, again, the folks that are working on the show uh, seem very passionate and, and very, uh, for the most part, I think, um, they're, what's the word I'm looking for? They're confident about what's going to be sh shown. They're excited, too. Uh, and Kelly, is there any other uh, comments that you saw that you might want to highlight? Oh, um, Piggy Lady 225 said... <laughs> How many times rewatching this video is too much? I mean, I've probably passed it. I've probably already passed it, but da da da. <laughs> yeah, she, how many times can you watch it when it, before it becomes a problem? I don't know. I think I've I've done that too many times too, but I just call it research. And if the show <laughs> makes me laugh out loud, then y'all you know, know it's funny because I don't laugh out loud much. Yeah, not even at <laughs> Freakazoid. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Can't wait for that a review to finally come out. Hope make me our, our next next episode. Hopefully, unless something else drops, <laughs> we'll finally do our uh, our our talk about. Um, oh gosh, the cloud and yeah. what was the other one on there? I Are we gonna well, mostly, <laughs> mostly? I just I just laugh inside. You know, oh, like okay. like on the roller coasters. You know, you have to scream inside now. I just yes. laugh inside. Can't get that. But COVID. if I laugh out loud, then. I'll be laughing. <laughs> it's very important when in a group watching Animaniacs, though, to make sure you are wearing your masks uh, to prevent the spread of COVID in your house. Unless you're just around your family members, in which case, laugh in get each other's sick. faces. Get just laugh sick. in each other's faces yeah, all day. Get them sick. <laughs> uh, well, any last thoughts on any comments, anything like that, uh, that you guys have seen? Um. I will watch it when it comes out November 20th. Is that I right? might. <laughs> you might. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, let's go ahead and close things out just real quick with not uh, some of the, which, by the way, thank you for all the people who have been following us on Facebook, especially, just blew up uh, recently. We had over, you Love like, us. You really love us. Yes, or at least they don't even know us. <laughs> Yeah, they love Animaniacs, which is a good sign that they will hopefully love this podcast as well. And speaking of people that love our podcast, let's go ahead and get to a couple of reviews real quick of some people that love our podcast. And these, oh, this great first segue. One, yeah. <laughs> this first one comes from Octopus Cartoonist. Octopus Cartoonist 42. There's 41 other Octopus Cartoonists out there. Uh. Uh, and back... And back uh, then he said, the, uh, he or she said, the best Animaniacs podcast, and this is A dot dot dot. I'm going to guess he said, or they said, around. Uh, Thanks for being the podcast that's keeping me from going totally insane about the astounding lack of official reboot news and keeping us updated on the state of the Animaniacs 2020 show. I like your informative yet neutral tone about the quality of the new Hulu show. I also enjoy your reviews and interviews that are fun when I want to revisit some of my favorite episodes. Keep on doing what you're doing. And you keep on making octopus cartoons, octopus cartoonist. Uh, next one right here, that was from July, and we totally skipped it. This next <laughs> one's a little bit more recent. This one's just from a few weeks ago, September 6th, and from Holly Meriday. And it says, if you're an Animaniacs fan, comma, you, dot, dot, dot. I'm assuming she says, uh, probably want to listen to this podcast, I guess. I think it's you should says. stick away from this podcast. Stay away. No, <laughs> both of these are five star reviews, which oh, I'm okay. still waiting for a five star horrible negative review. Which <laughs> please don't do that. But I'm, it'd be, I think it would be hilarious in one. My, my sick sense of humor five thinks stars. that'd be funny. Five stars. I hate this. Uh, <laughs> Makes me want to puke, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sweeney. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, I recently started this podcast, and I am nearing completion of another podcast, uh, I'm guessing episode. (laughs) I'm watching Animaniacs when it premiered. uh, I started watching Animaniacs when it premiered during my junior year of high school, and I'm very excited for their return in November. I enjoyed the second episode with Jess Wacko Warner Harnell, and I and I'm literally just as I'm typing this, starting the Maurice the Brain LaMarche panel episode. This is episode 2H. They are going from the very beginning, and they could not stop. They couldn't, you know, wait. They had to give us a positive review, and they're just two episodes in. Wow. Wait till they hear how better. Yeah, I was going (laughs) to say, wait till they get downhill. I mean, as we get to 180 something, oh boy. Uh, (laughs) Well, thank you. What are they still doing? (laughs) (laughs) Four years later, and they're still doing it. Well, thank you so much for those positive reviews. Uh, always, always glad to hear from listeners and uh, from because guys, if if you folks weren't listening uh, to our podcast, we we would you would shut up, uh, uh, shut up and shut down and just talk to each other about Animaniacs offline. So it's always nice to have, <laughs> <laughs> always nice to have uh, people to to listen and uh, join the conversation. Uh, and speaking of joining the conversation, I think we should get to some contact information. I'm trying to work on segues today, and I'm, I'm doing a reasonably good job. I think. Really good. <laughs> Nathan, where can people reach you online? Oh, Joey, you mentioned it earlier. Django FT. Everyone knows it's me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Kelly, what about you? I am on, on Twitter also, Yoda Princess, Y-O-D-A-P-R-N-C-S-S, or email me, Kelly, at BigShinyRobot.com. All right. And as for the Animaniacast, we are on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and uh, and every single podcast player out there, including Amazon Music, just started doing a podcast thing, which I'm... I love Amazon Music. I'm not so sure they're a great podcast player, but they're starting off, and I think it's another place. Hey, if you want to listen to us a little bit there, go for it. Uh, And also, you can go to Animaniacast.com. That'll take you over to our RetroZap archives of all of our episodes. And uh, speaking of RetroZap, hey, you should go to RetroZap every day. There's great articles and fantastic podcasts. We're a proud member of the RetroZap Podcast Network. And if you'd like to talk to us or any of the other RetroZap podcasters, head on over to our Discord channel. You can get a welcome link by going to discord.animaniacast.com. Well, that'll do it for today's episode. So for Nathan and Kelly, this is Joey saying good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. 
this podcast is not endorsed by Warner Brothers or Amblin Entertainment and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Animaniacs, Tiny Toon Adventures, Freakazoid, the Warner Brothers logo, all names, pictures, and sounds are registered trademarks and or copyrights of their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of the Animaniacast unless otherwise indicated.